Okay, welcome to SAT 3310. This is scripting for administration and automation. Today we're going to be talking about PowerShell and how to use PowerShell to work with SQL. Um, first and foremost, to be working with SQL and Windows, there is a free version of SQL Server. It's called SQL Server Express. Actually, I should say, uh, because it's Microsoft, that would be SQL Server Express. Uh, this is just a Microsoft SQL Server. Uh, the nice thing about Express is that it's free to download and it's also free to, to use and it's free to redistribute. If you are using it to develop software scripts, uh, you can actually redistribute the uh, SQL Server Express with your script. Um, SQL Server Express is it's difficult to download and difficult to install and... Uh, not really the best to work with. So just be prepared when you're ready to do the lab. Uh, it's going to take some extra time to do it. Uh, here's some tips that you'll need. Uh, first, when you go to the download page, uh, make sure that you download the uh, local DB 64-bit version and that you're downloading SQL local database MSI package. Um, there's a lot of different versions to be looking at. It's easy to get confused here. Um, when you're working then with SQL Server Express, you can mostly rely on command prompt uh, to do all of your SQL work. In this case, you would need to create a database uh, for use in the lab. So from a command prompt, uh, the, the command is uh, SQL local DB create. And in my example, I'm just calling it 33 ton. Um, and then you also have to start the database and you can do things like get info on that database. There are GUI management tools for uh, SQL on, on Windows. Uh, you would have to download the uh, SQL Server Management Studio or SSMS. Uh, this is an all-in-one sort of um, using, configuring, managing uh, everything about your your SQL Server. Uh, the problem is it's uh, it's a large software program and it's not the easiest to use. Uh, you also need to use the SQL Server Management Studio or SSMS if you want to do things like import export. Uh, so you'll need to do this to import our uh, comma separated file. Recall that in our uh, demonstration file, we have both the wireless uh, access point table and the clients table. Uh, so you can import this right from a flat file source, your, your, your CSV, and um, go from there. Normally, um, you're able to use shortcuts in your script to access your SQL, or I'm sorry, SQL database. Uh, unfortunately, there's a bug in uh, SQL Express. So you're going to need to use the long form of the SQL database. To get that long form connection name, you can run uh, SQL command and then local database and then the name of the database that you're running. And what you're gonna end up with, you can see here's a screenshot that info is going to give you things like the name, the version, the owner, um, the state that it's in, when it was last started. And the last thing is going to give you an, a local instance pipe name. So recall that a named pipe are um, just like our regular pipe that you think of where the output from one or goes into the input of the other. Uh, this is a local named pipe, uh, which we you might think of as like a socket that named pipe address is what you're going to need to use in your script. Special note, every time you start and stop the database, you're going to get a new unique ID. So if you're having problems connecting to your database, run that SQL command dash S again and see if your local uh, instance of your named pipe has changed. So that's an important note to get. Um, once you have that local named pipe, you can interact with your database from the command line and you can do things like SQL command, 
uh, named pipe and give it the local connection name. And then you'll get your SQL prompt, which is just the command number and then the greater than sign. So it's waiting for the first command and we might want to test it and say, um, select everything from the clients table where manufacturer equals Apple. And you should get lots and lots of, of um, delicious output. Uh, how does that compare to say like Perl or Bash? It's, it's pretty close. Uh, so you still have to set up your data source. What I've done is you can see here in PowerShell, I've just uh, made a new variable called data source. And that's just a copy and paste of that named pipe. Uh, if it was a secure connection, you could add a user and a password. We're, we're not using a secure connection for purposes of this lab, uh, but that's where you would add it. And then a data uh, variable that sets the database name. Uh, I like to set my SQL query as a separate variable. Uh, it just makes it easier for changing later on. Um, the the connection to SQL is uh, an older uh .NET framework, um, or according to the site, a framework. Uh, it's not as elegant as maybe some of the newer PowerShell things. So what you need to be able to do is set up a, a SQL connection. So in this case, we're going to be saying connection is a new object, and it's a system data S SQL client SQL connection. And the connection string is... Um, the server equals our data source, which again is our named pipe, uh, user ID and password, which we're not using, but you can put in those variables. Database would be the database name and we're not using any uh, integrated security. So the total thing now is our connection dot connection string um, is our new connection string. Uh, then you need to open uh, a connection to the database. Uh, you need to um, make a new command. So we're using, again, it's a .NET framework. So we're saying um, command is our connection create command. So now command dot command text is our query. So we're stringing all of these things together. The result would be the command execute, uh, or I should say execute reader, and that's going to populate our variable of results. Uh, we can make an, a new uh, .NET framework for a table, and we can actually say table is a new object, and it's a system data data table. Uh, what this is going to do is it's going to fill a data table with the um, results uh, that are that come from the data reader. Uh, of course, if there's already data in there, it's just going to get merged. So to get it fully loaded, you just say table load uh, the results. Uh, once we want to, once we have that table loaded, once you in PowerShell, you just want to see the results. Um, you just say, you know, table just to be able to display the results. This is also maybe an opportunity here where you could do things like um, grouping objects or sorting objects um, using that table to do a, a group or sort object in SQL. I should say, I'm sorry, in PowerShell. Finally, make sure in PowerShell, uh, because we've opened our SQL connection, you always make sure that you want to close your SQL connection.